There are many legends about people killing dragons. What's going on? I think back in those days they called them dinosaurs, called dinosaurs dragons. Today we call them dinosaurs, but the name dinosaur wasn't even invented until 1841. So they didn't call them dinosaurs back then, they called them dragons. I think man killed off most of the dinosaurs for some of those reasons and maybe others. But the, on the walls of the ancient city, they found carvings of lions and carvings of the Sirish, the Babylonian dragon, long neck and a long tail. Apparently they had a dragon in Babylon. I don't know. I think dinosaurs lived even after the days of Nebuchadnezzar, clear up to the days of Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great recorded in his memoirs that a dragons 100 feet long stuck their heads out of the caves and hissed at his soldiers when they were in India. Could dinosaurs have lived clear up until 300 BC? Now look, I know, if you believe in evolution, and you believe what you've been taught in school, you've been taught dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and don't you dare question that, or you'll be excommunicated from the temples of higher learning. Okay, I know what you've been taught. But just open your brain for a minute, maybe somebody can drop an intelligent thought in there. Maybe our whole perspective of history is wrong. I think dinosaurs lived after that, just 400 years ago. In 1572, an Italian peasant killed a dinosaur in Italy. An Italian scientist got the dead body and had it mounted for a museum display. In 1572, a Tanistrophius, long neck, long tail dinosaur. I think dinosaurs were even hunted by the Indians in the Grand Canyon area. Carved into the walls of the Grand Canyon, you can see the picture here. There are carvings of people carved, called petroglyphs carved into the rock and carvings of a dinosaur, upright posture, dinosaur. Did the Indians hunt dinosaurs in Grand Canyon? Here's another one, carved into the rock, long neck, long tail, four legs, round body. How about this picture? In Africa, this painting found on the wall of a dinosaur with a native running away from it. Could it be dinosaurs have always lived with man and we have been brainwashed, our history is wrong? In 1915, a German U-boat torpedoed a British ship. As the ship was sinking, it exploded underwater and a 60-foot sea monster came flying up out of the water. The red book right here on the table, Dinosaurs by Design by Duane Gish. It's got a picture, or got uh, the, the log book account from the German U-boat commander. Could it be dinosaurs lived up until World War I? Folks, there are even stories about giant octopus reaching up and pulling sailors off of ships, sometimes pulling the whole ship under if it's a small ship. You say, oh, Brother Hovind, you've gone off the deep end now. Octopus never get big enough to pull a ship underwater. The biggest octopus they ever caught was in Kodiak, Alaska. Guinness Book of World Records has it recorded. Yeah, I'm familiar with that one. 36 foot. But folks, that is not the biggest octopus. An octopus washed up on the beach in St. Augustine, Florida in 1896. Pictures on the white poster here. This octopus, as it laid there on the beach, was 200 feet across and weighed five tons. That's a big octopus. But that's not even the biggest one. A whale was caught in Seattle, Washington, off the coast of Seattle. It, all around the whale's body were 18-inch round scars, circular sucker marks from an octopus that wrapped completely around the whale and tried to drown the whale. Inside the whale's stomach, they found one arm to an octopus. The arm was 150 feet long. The whale had apparently bitten the arm off. It was published in 1910. New York Herald is a brontosaurus roaming Africa's wild. There, were, there have been expeditions into that swamp over the last hundred years that almost all of them come back and say, man, there could be dinosaurs or there are dinosaurs in there. 1948, Saturday Evening Post. Here's the article right here. 1948, Saturday Evening Post. There could be dinosaurs still alive in the Congo swamp. 1980, Roy Mackle, University of Chicago, biology professor. Name, address, and phone numbers in the front cover. This book has had a rough life, as you can see. Um, Roy Mackle went to the swamp. He read all these reports from these Congo uh, expeditions and from the Belgian uh, reports, and he said, you know, I'm going to go check it out for myself. Now, Dr. Mackel believes in evolution, big time, okay? He's retired now from biology, teaching biology at University of Chicago. Put his name, address, and phone numbers in here. And since we're making a tape, I have the old address at 5555 South Ellis Avenue. That's the university address, uh, room 307. I think he still gets mail there if you want to get a hold of him. But dinosaur's still alive. He went to the swamp in 1980. Spent six weeks, traveled around, talked to natives that live in the swamp. They went by canoe up in there as far as they could go. And they asked the natives about the different animals that live in the swamp. He gathered enough information to make his curiosity peak, and he said, man, I'm going back. The next year, he went back in 81 and spent a quarter of a million dollars 
in nine weeks doing research on dinosaurs that might still be alive. As he traveled around in the swamp, he interviewed different people who lived there, and he showed them pictures in a coloring book type stuff, different sketches of different animals, to see if the natives recognized the animal. And he talked to them through an interpreter, Congolese. He asked them, he said, do you have any animals that look like this? And the natives said, oh yeah, that's Mokili Membi. Hmm? He lives out in the swamp. He's about 25 feet long, got a body about as big as a hippo, long tail, long neck, not very friendly, very, very shy, reclusive animal, lives in the swamp, you know, turn the page, what else you want to know? <laughs> Just no big deal. Dr. Mackel said, fellas, that is a dinosaur. Don't you know they've been dead for 70 million years? And the natives said, well, we're sorry, we didn't know that. See, we've never been to the University of Chicago to study evolution. All we know is we, we see them out there in the swamp once in a while. As he traveled around, he interviewed folks all over. The interviews are right there in the book. You can read it, or you can get it from him in Chicago. Get the book. The natives said, yeah, there are not very many of them left. There's a few out there. They live underwater, very shy. When they hear some noise, they duck under the water. Chances of seeing one are pretty slim. But most of the great hunters, most of the old men, had seen one once or twice in their lifetime, Mokili Mimbi. They said their favorite plant to eat was the Malombo plant. And they showed Dr. Mackle the plants. That's the Malombo plant. They told him, they said, if you want to find one, travel around in the swamp until you find lots of Malombo and no hippopotamus. Because hippos like to eat Malombo also. And those two fight over it. And Mokili Mimbi is meaner and stronger and bigger. And he drives the hippos out. And he gets the Malombo plants in that area. As they traveled around, they picked up lots of rumors, uh, first-hand accounts from other people who had seen it. They found footprints. There's Dr. Mackle showing one of the footprints squared off here. He doesn't know he's been dead 70 million years. This one was even caught by a Japanese fishing boat. 1977, they're dragging their net down by New Zealand, and they pulled up a dead, rotting, stinking carcass of a dinosaur. See, down by New Zealand, there's a place where they fish called the Chatham Rise, where the water's only 900 feet deep. Which, that's pretty deep. Well, it's not like the rest of the ocean, where it's 15,000 feet deep. And so there's a lot of fish in the Chatham Rise. And so the Japanese come down there and fish a lot. They're dragging their net, and they pulled it up, and there in their net was a 4,000-pound, 32-foot-long, dead dinosaur. That picture appears in this book, Great Dinosaur Mystery. I've got this on my order form. Now, if you want to get it direct from the publisher, that's fine. But in the back of this is a picture of the dinosaur caught by the Japanese fishing boat. They said it had a long neck and four big flippers. 